you have just compared Israel with ISIS. No, I, have, I, don't, I don't see any comparison between it's Israel It's going to be ISIS. the headlines tomorrow. Piers yeah, Morgan, not, Israel is ISIS. I suppose a proportionate response would be for 3,000 Israelis to go through the fence. You're talking in a generalized okay. way about people in the West who always talk about Arabs as savages. I don't. No, 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 I'm talking I about America. I actually Western led media. the campaign. I'm talking about West I led the I'm, media campaign listen, in this country it, against the Iraq war. OK, so I don't you see, are, you, you, I don't you see people the in the Middle ones, East Pierce. as savages. You but are what I would one say of the is, good ones. But what I, I would say not, is... I'm talking about you. You're great. No, no, it's not about me You're being amazing. great. It's we about, love you. It's about, you. it's about the way Hamas behaved on October the 7th was like savage, like a pack of savages. It was the worst atrocity against Jewish people yes. since the Holocaust. There has to be... Of course. There has to be a response. They, and my they question should be for you eradicated. Is, my question for you is, notwithstanding the history, them. Basim, what is the proportionate response? But I don't know, but there's no Hamas in the West Bank and they're still dying there. So what's mm. your excuse? I don't have any excuse. He's saying that it wasn't Palestine who, um, who decided to say go and started this atrocity. Um, so he's saying if the people who started this atrocity, who are Hamas and not all of Palestine, um, then Hamas has been taken care of in that area. So if that's over with, then where are we going from here? And Pierce not going to ask that question because it is like he's there to ask the questions, first of all. All right. If Pierce had a solution, he would have said, this is my solution. This is what I would do. But that's not, bro, you came to my show. I'm going to ask you these questions. Clearly, you have many opinions about it. So I'm asking you some questions that, that should be answered. I think that what Pierce has asked him is fair play. But obviously, you can see when this gentleman um, is on his toes. He's on his toes. And you can see when he's running. You can see when he wants to escape certain offerings from Pierce. And that's that's kind of telling. Okay, what's what's your explanation? Sorry, sorry, uh, my earpiece went down. I, okay. I listen. I don't make any pretense that this hasn't been a massive problem. Okay, what, 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 between uh, Palestine uh, and Israel, uh, yeah. going back to the mid forties, we all know this, right? I, I, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce. Listen, I'm not saying that you're making excuses, but if you are adopting a certain point of view, mm. you have to at least defend it. I'm telling you, there is no Hamas in the West Bank. What is what is the excuse? Mm. Not your excuse. What is the excuse? To those people well it's listen this question of proportionality is one that no it, no no answer my question i've been answering your question you answer mine it's actually not my job to answer your question it's not okay not your not your it's job not. I, I i agree with I'm you i'm more it interested in you job. Who has family in Gaza? Who's an Egyptian I'll tell you, I'll tell you in, that, in the Middle I'll tell you East, something. right? I'm more interested in what no, you no, have no, to no, say. No, okay, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I think Hamas is the problem. Okay, right now, let's say agree. Hamas is removed. Let's Hamas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm agreeing with everything. Hamas. You want me to condemn Hamas? I will condemn Hamas, Hummus, Hassan. Uh, everybody. I do see how he's using Hamas as the scapegoat. Hamas has not always been the issue. It hasn't. We just now watched a video that showed the beef between that and that in that region for sheesh. My gracious, it was a long time um, that they went over this, and Hamas wasn't the issue. Hamas did become an issue, but they probably are the issue now, or the they are the face of this issue now. But even still, it's not only Hamas, bro. I'm just saying. Okay. Let's say, for example, Hamas ceased mm -hmm. to exist. Okay? Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Hamas ceased to exist today. Now, right now, in Palestine, mm. in West Bank and, and, uh, and Gaza, 20% of Palestinians go through Israeli prison system, whether mm -hmm. imprisonment, whether uh, 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 interrogation, whether torture. And the rest of them, they live a life of daily loss of land, of homes, of life, and they are they are suffocated by this. So let me ask you something. If you are a Palestinian living into these conditions for decades, would you would you sympathize with your oppressor or sympathize with the people who claim they resist them even if they are terrorists? I have made I have made no secret that I think the conditions Palestinians have had to exist under are completely unacceptable. Yeah. I've said that for years. So the question then becomes okay. how do you forge peace between two warring parts of that region who for decades have approached peace, in my view, with mutual sledgehammers, with no actual desire to have peace. And I think it comes down in the end to great leadership. But, and but, I, I don't think there's yeah, great leadership. Yeah, but, but, I don't think, well, hang on, let me make my point. I don't think there's great leadership on either side. Where is the Nelson Mandela figure here to come through all this Nelson, hatred Nelson, on both Nelson sides? Nelson Mandela? Yeah, well, where is that Nelson figure? Mandela, N N Nelson Mandela actually have criticised Israel for being a horrible state. All of the South African uh, I, I <laughs> activists know. have actually my point is, Israel. My, uh, my point is yes. about how he, how he responded to a country that was so 
divide is a, tem I, I is a template. I I I, is a template for how you I, get to peace, isn't it? I, I, I haven't met Nelson Mandela, so I wouldn't know. Mm. But like, I, 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 there is a point. There's a there's a very important point here. You know, I want to understand what is the logic of Israel carpet bombing Gaza. I mean, if there is a logic, if it is a good, if this will make Israel safe, I want to hear the logic. So if they continue bombing, what are they hoping to achieve? Well, that's I think what, we know what, what their we know what their stated aim is. Their stated aim is to eradicate yes. and wipe out Hamas. They believe Hamas no, are, yeah, living, but... are living predominantly in northern Gaza. They also are aware they're living amongst civilians. So it's an incredibly difficult okay. thing. As so, I said, as I said so, in my so monologue, so, so, you know, it is so very, very so difficult to see how I, they do I, this I, without I, massive collateral if I can, damage. So if I can understand this correctly, basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organizations do, because terrorist organizations will have no chance beating a whole nation in battle. So they terrorize the civilians in order to spread fear and terror so they can turn against their government to change their policy or to resign. You have just compared Israel with ISIS. No, I haven't. I don't, I don't see any comparison between it's Israel It's going to be the headlines tomorrow. Piers only, Morgan, no, not, Israel is ISIS. Only, is only amongst people who weren't listening. The, the comparison, of which course. is more apposite, is ISIS and Hamas. They are both nihilistic yes, terror groups absolutely. intent on as many Jewish people and others as they can possibly kill. And you, you can't, know what? I'm you can't, do you can't get I'm peace with people like that. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to do something that nobody done on your television. Mm. You know what I'm going to do I'm on your episode? I'm going to do. I am going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. I'm going to put my, my myself in the in the place of an Israeli settler in the kaputs, and I want to speak to my Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and prosperity and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavy, heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a, a, a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed. Our friends, our families, kidnapping our grandmothers and babies and went in. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have our court, our Supreme Court, what are you doing with the money being given to you to the United States? Also, you are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages, our people. I heard a rumor in the kibbutz that you are doing that as an you let that happen to as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe it. I said, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watched an interview for Danny Ayelon. He was your chief advisor. He was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said, Mr. Prime Minister? He said that the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live into 10 cities temporarily, huh? temporarily, wink, wink, until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Aha. As we've seen this movie before. So, يعني, and, I, and when I saw this, I couldn't explain to my fellows in the kibbutz, how come our Israeli government is trading human lives for another piece of land? So as an Israeli citizen, I need to hold my Israeli government accountable. And as an American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel, we're giving them $4 billion every year. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever America ever done. Well, I, if I am in the in the place of Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them I hate bad investment. They haunt me, you know, like little finger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself. And I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24 seven. Israel wants you to believe that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so difficult. It's like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He you up and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Basim. look at Israel as Superman, but they're really homelander. Wallah, they are like, they are, you, you, they are shooting Basim, fish I want to say in a barrel and I'll... they are annoyed with the splashes. Ben Shapiro, um, when, he, when he flipped and he did his monologue as an Israeli citizen, and he was acting as if he was speaking directly to Netanyahu, he attempted to, in a roundabout way, accused Israel as allowing this to happen to their people for six hours just so they'd have the rest of the world back them in what was to come. Like it was some sick plot of Israel to forego the lives of their own citizens, knowing that this was about to happen, knowing that hundreds, maybe thousands of their people will die. They thought it necessary as a chess move to allow it to happen for six hours before saying, okay, 
Y'all ready? Was that enough people? Okay. All right. We sacrificed a couple of our people. Now we can go forward with the plan. And the plan, the second part of this plan is let's wipe them off the map. And no one will be against it, especially after they see what they've done to us. That's how he tried to paint it. This won't be the first time either that I've heard others put it like that. Like uh, their security, Israel's security is top notch. The best in the world. Like he explained, if a dove tried to fly close to a, a certain area of Israel that's protected that highly, it will be shot down within seconds. But you let men, armed men, armed militia paraglide into your area your citizens for six hours and you all did nothing and then you decide to completely wipe them out now anyone who anyone who's a natural skeptic will look at this and say you know what he's making some sense right here i mean it's not adding up why did they allow this to happen so long before they decided to answer what were they getting ready for what were they preparing for were they bunkered down protecting their prime minister so that he not be hurt and they were just planning on a response it could have been any any number of things but at this point is just um it's speculation it's pure speculation okay so for more on the situation in israel i'm joined now by the ceo and co-founder of the daily wire ben shapiro's partner Jeremy Boring. Uh, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I'm sorry we demoted you earlier to mere MD. You are the CEO and co-founder. Uh, you know Ben Shapiro better than anyone, really. Uh, I did a big interview with Ben, obviously, the other night, um, which went around the world um, and has sparked a big reaction, including from our guest, Bassam Youssef, who's still with us. First of all, you've been listening to, to Bassam and what he's been saying. What's your response? Well, first of all, I make it a point not to speak for Ben Shapiro. He's got a 20 IQ points on me and speaks for a living professionally. So he's much better prepared to defend himself. But as his business partner, as his best friend, I, I do feel like I have to respond to the things that Bassam was just saying. Uh, first of all, the question of how many sons of bitches have to be killed in order to end this conflict, I, I, mean, I suppose that the answer is as many of them as it takes. That doesn't mean that I or Ben or any decent person in their right mind is happy with the killing of civilians. Uh, I posted at the very beginning of this conflict that a, a woman or a child blown apart in Gaza is just as tragic as a Jewish baby in one of the settlements. That doesn't mean that Israel's actions and the actions of Hamas are morally equivalent. You know, tragedy is the tragedy, but the moral equivalency is nonsense. If, if you entered Israel with the express purpose of targeting and murdering civilians with your own hands in cold blood, that is not comparable to Israel bombing targets in the Gaza Strip and killing civilians as a terrible, tragic consequence. War, war is terrible. War is an awful thing. That's why decent people don't lightly engage in war and why Hamas should not have incited this war. You know, we can talk about the history of the Israeli conflict. I'm not a professional political commentator. I'm a, I'm a CEO, I'm a screenwriter, uh, and I'm certainly not Ben Shapiro. I'm not here to discuss the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but we all saw what happened on October 7th. And the idea that Israel was not going to react severely to that or that Israel should not react severely to that is ludicrous. And the Jeremy, idea let me ben ask you, the let me ask ben you Shapiro the question. should be a moderating voice, mm. that Ben Shapiro should be what, saying, no, Israel should not respond mm. in this situation. That's nonsense. So, let me ask you though, Jeremy, what, I mean, the question which I think is the big question, what is a proportionate response to that outrage on October the 7th, which is the worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust? Uh, what is proportionate if it's true, as reports well, there, are suggesting tonight, that there may have been a hospital hit by a, an Israeli strike and up to 500 people or more have died, that would yeah. seem to me, if that is verified, and it's not verified yet, it, you know, we don't know exactly what has happened other than there's been a hit on this hospital. But if that is verified to have been an Israeli strike, that will strike many people as disproportionate. Certainly. Well, first of all, I don't know what a proportionate response is or why we would want it. I suppose a proportionate response would be for 3,000 Israelis to go through the fence, gun down innocent Palestinian women and children burn their bodies, burn them alive, take hostages with their women. No one wants a proportionate response. No. Holy crap. There's an answer. There's an answer. That's probably the best answer that I've heard. That's the best answer that I've heard. And he didn't even finish yet. I'm just talking about the part about the proportionate response. He said the, report, the proportionate response will be to do the exact same thing to them that they did to them. That would be the proportionate response. Wow. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine what that would make Israel look like if they didn't just go in there and just wipe them out, but they started to do an eye for an eye? If they did an eye for an eye, thanks, Joey. Um, if they did an eye for an eye and they did exactly the same exact thing that was done to them, they would really be looked at like monsters in the eyes of the Palestinians. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask burn for. Burn their bodies, burn them alive, take hostages with their women. 
No one wants a proportionate response. No, no moral person could possibly call for a proportionate response. The purpose of war is to defeat your enemy. The West has, in my lifetime, forgotten the purpose of war because the true cost of war is so terrible. The last time the West engaged in war and won it was World War II, and they did it through incredible brutality. They did it by bringing their enemies to heal. That's not a thing to rah-rah about. That's not a thing to look forward to. As I said, all decent people should avoid war. But I think the sort of lie of the post-World War II, the post-war consensus lie, is that somehow war uh, in which you kill a bunch of people and don't secure victory is morally superior to war where you do secure victory. I would say that the only way to morally justify a war is to win it. Otherwise, your ar the very argument that brought you into the war, this enemy must be defeated, ends up being proven a lie. I mean, Afghanistan, I think ever, America had every right to go into Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban was harboring Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda flew planes into buildings in the United States, killed thousands of our citizens, uh, brought the nation into untold agony, pain, and horror. America had every right morally to go in and destroy the Taliban and destroy al-Qaeda. Yeah, but I would argue, but the Jeremy, Taliban now, But the Taliban now rules well, that's in my, Afghanistan. That's my point. The war was not won. But that's my point, actually. I've done a column about this tonight. Uh, for The Sun here in the UK, which is mm -hmm. I was editor of a newspaper when the Iraq war happened. I uh, opposed it very aggressively as the editor I of the recall. paper. Um, and sadly, we were borne out by events. It was a complete disaster, the Iraq war, in my view. It was illegally contested, I think. Um, and the consequences were appalling in terms of loss of life, a million people, in terms of ISIS being allowed to breed and create their merry hell around the world, in terms of complete dismantlement of, of Iraq itself as a, as a functioning country. Uh, and I think Afghanistan, again, 20 years of you know attacking an enemy, which is now running the country again, seemed to me, again, to be kind of pointless. And I do wonder w whether Israel, in its blind fury, which I completely understand, has thought through the consequences of actually launching a full air, ground and sea offensive into Gaza as to actually what happens at the end of that. Well, I suppose Israel wasn't really given the opportunity to fully contemplate what the consequences of that action might be, because Israel didn't instigate this war. This war was instigated by a horrible terrorist attack on Israel. And a state is put in a position where it has to respond. Now, one might argue that the very fact that Israel has yet to actually launch their ground invasion means that they are actually making a calculation about what the cost will be, what victory looks like. Any rational person, any decent person can engage in a conversation about what is the appropriate response for Israel. Of course they can. Uh, but this sort of moral equivalency thing, I don't think is a sign of decency to engage in a conversation okay. about moral equivalency. Let me bring uh, Basim back in. You've been listening to this, Basim. What's your response to? He's so boring. Like he's so, I'm just a smart guy in the room. Let me say my smart stuff and then, dang, why can't I remember his dang old name that fast? What Jeremy's been saying. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch a gentleman's name. It's Jeremy Boring. Jeremy He's Boring. Executive. Duh, I called him Boring. And his, his name is actually Boring. <laughs> his name is literally Boring. Get out of here. That is hilarious. Okay. All right. That is all right. Um, my bad, Jeremy. Bro, my bad, man. Listen, it's not like you're supposed to be all, you know, excitable and all that. I'm boring too. How about that? It takes one to know one. I'm boring. I noticed another f uh, fellow boring guy, and I point you out. I meant no disrespect. ...of The Daily Wire, and co-founder with Ben Shapiro of The Daily Wire. Hi, Jeremy. Please say hello to Ben Shapiro, and please tell him that I do think he is the smartest person to ever walk the earth. Thank you so much. So, as response to Jeremy, uh, I, 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 I agree with everything you said. I mean, what is disproportionate? I mean, the, you, he just used the uh, examples from Second World War and America showing that civilian casualty is, uh, I mean, I, I heard his voice. He was very sad, and he, as he was telling us, it is so inevitable to kill so many civilians because it's something that we cannot avoid. I hear the sadness in his voice, and I know that it's a very difficult decision to kill all of these civilians because that's for a higher cause, and I understand. But my question, I, I have two questions. The question is, how can you justify the killing in the West Bank where Hamas does not exist? And if the disproportionate response during the, over all of these years have actually worked, what will be new this time that did not happen before? I okay. just want to, that, 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 that was my question. Okay, that Basim, was my question. Uh, I'm gonna, okay. I'm so, gonna so, ask. So, so, so now, so well, now, Basim, so now if to... I ask the question, can I, can I say something on my side? Well, a little you've, bit no, personal? Basim, with respect, a little bit personal? Basim, with respect, I gave you uh, half the show to have your side. Jeremy's had a lot less time. Uh, I'm going to have to move on. You want me to leave? 
That's or do you I'm want gonna me to have stay? To, I'm going to have to let you go because we've been on there with you for 40 minutes. Oh, okay. Now. Bye right? bye. But listen, bye bye. bye I'd bye. like to talk to you again, bye and bye. thank you for joining the program. I appreciate it. Oh, by by, by, by the way, my, my, my wife's family is is all right, and they sent us a house. It's it's bombed. It's beautiful. It's it's going to be a good uh, uh, like Halloween theme. So well, thank you. I'm very sorry for what your family are going through in Gaza, and I mean oh, that no. very sincerely. By the way, I don't know. I, I don't know my. Fa I don't know him. By the way, I don't. I haven't actually met them. They didn't even come to my wedding. They couldn't because they are stuck in Gaza. Okay. And she never saw them because, you know, Gaza is not a destination. Bassem, I, as I know, say, I, we, 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 we hear their voices. Yeah, and it's, uh, they, they die. It's fine. It's I'm, fine. Bassem, I wish your family all the very best. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate I, it. I, I don't. Thank you. <laughs> that guy's still funny, though. I don't give a damn what y'all say. He's still hilarious. He's still hilarious. <laughs>